a few years ago there was a lot of excitement in regards to some kind of an anomalous event or anomalous detection coming from several particle accelerators on the planet. And specifically in regards to what's known as muons. And back in 2023, this anomaly was referred to as muon G-2. Or the muon G-2 experiment at Fermilab that basically made the news but was a little bit difficult to explain because of what was involved and what exactly this meant. But in a nutshell, back in 2023 and early 2024, we had a lot of headlines like this. The experiment strengthens the evidence for new physics. This was actually from the Fermilab itself, so they were not kidding. As a matter of fact, quite a lot of scientists even started to believe that maybe what we're detecting is actually some kind of a fifth fundamental force. So not gravity, not electromagnetism, not the weak or the strong force, something else. Which is why a lot of these announcements kind of went viral. Although technically the first viral announcement was actually back in 2021. But now, years and years later, and following very thorough analysis and recalculations and even more experiments, we have our final official result. The result based on data collection lasting over five years and some of the most accurate observations by several teams. And unfortunately, um, no force number five. It looks like there was no anomaly after all, and it looks like modern physics is just as accurate as we always thought. But let's discuss all of this in a bit more detail. Let's talk about exactly what all of this means, talk about the implications of this research. But let's start with muons. What exactly are they? Well, in the standard model of elementary particles, they're the cousins of electrons. As a matter of fact, they're extremely similar to electrons in a lot of things, except for mass. Their mass is approximately 200 times higher. And they also have another cousin known as tau. But unlike electrons, in the modern world, we don't really hear about the tau particles or muons just as much. And that's mostly because none of the modern technology depends on them, at least for now, and also because they're just a little bit different in terms of properties. But muons do interact with you all the time. As a matter of fact, right now, hundreds if not thousands of muons pass through your body going extremely fast. And that's because generally muons are produced in the upper atmosphere when various cosmic rays interact with it. And so one way of thinking about muons is that they're basically kind of like really, really fat electrons, 200 times the mass, and normally disappear after just two microseconds. But because they tend to pass through stuff quite easily, in the last few years, some scientists actually started to use muons as a type of a scanner for various archaeological sites. They were actually used to scan quite a lot of different locations, including the Egyptian pyramids, and allowed archaeologists to discover various hidden chambers. And so that means that in the last few years, researchers potentially discovered some of the first practical use for these particles, which means that we'll probably know more about them in the next few years. But just like electrons and tau particles, muons also have a charge. So in some sense, they act like tiny magnets. And because they act like tiny magnets, they also create various effects as they move through space. And while typically, any charged particle moving in a straight line will usually generate magnetic fields that normally just curl around them. But here we know that even if they stand still, they'll still produce magnetic fields just based on the spin of the particle itself. And so these electrically charged spinning particles in essence produce what's known as the intrinsic angular momentum, which then results in the magnetic moment, which can be both measured and theoretically calculated. And while in classical physics for a typical magnet, in order to calculate its magnetic moment, we just have to multiply the spin angular momentum by its charge to mass ratio and then multiply this by one half, which in theory should just give us number two. And so in the classical universe, for a classical object, this magnetic moment should be equal to two, or technically minus two because it's a negative charge. And because this moment is also referred to as g, this is referred to as g minus two. And so you can kind of already see where all of this is going. Here, mu and g minus two measurements basically refer to the measurement of this magnetic moment for muons. But the question is, why? If we can theoretically predict what this moment should be, and if we can basically then measure it somehow, what's the point for doing these ultra expensive experiments? Well, here's the thing. These predictions and calculations only work for classical objects in classical physics. But as physicists discovered in the last hundred years, uh, turns out the universe is not so classical after all. Turns out things get really quantum very quick, especially for really tiny objects. 
And so because of the quantum nature of the universe, this magnetic moment actually gets changed by a lot of stuff as a result of various quantum interactions. Which means that physicists can now actually do something really clever. First of all, they can start making various predictions based on what we know about quantum physics in order to discover how this magnetic moment could potentially change based on various interactions. And then they can try to measure the magnetic moment physically and essentially compare the results. And the reason this is really important is because this literally allows us to now test a lot of quantum theories by testing various predictions with physical observations. And turns out that muons are perfect for this. Because apparently other particles, like for example the tau particles, are just not good enough for these observations. When it comes to the tau leptons, they are much heavier, but they also have a much shorter life and are extremely unstable. And they tend to have extreme contributions from the strong force, which makes any calculation ridiculously difficult and any experiment practically impossible. And so the data using tau particles is just not good enough. In contrast, the experimental measurements for the electrons are extremely accurate and seem to almost completely match the expectations based on modern particle physics. And so because electrons' magnetic moment has been verified many, many times, using electrons for these experiments does not actually reveal any new physics or any potential anomalies when it comes to quantum effects. In other words, electrons are just a little bit boring. But turns out muons are perfect. They're a little bit unstable, but not too unstable, and they're massive enough to produce extremely accurate observations and to be easily controlled. Moreover, when it comes to various effects, here the strong force is not as prominent as some other forces, which in a nutshell means that we can actually now start finding potential anomalies, making muons a perfect test for the standard model of physics. Or essentially using muons in various experiments allows physicists to find out if what we know about the universe is correct or not. But that's the easy explanation. Because here things get super complex super quick, especially when it comes to the complex theoretical models. And even the theories here don't really agree on what we should be seeing, and so some of the initial predictions and some of the initial theories did contain certain discrepancies in what should be detected. And here I guess I should probably explain why this is so complex. So as I mentioned, we're not talking about classical world. Here in the quantum world, as these muons fly around and as they interact magnetically with everything around them, their overall magnetic moment is then changed from various standard predictions due to some bizarre quantum interactions. For example, the now famous Higgs bosons that sometimes appear and disappear seem to influence them just a little bit. On top of this, various virtual particles, predicted by the quantum theory, as they appear and disappear, tend to change the magnetic moment just a little bit as well. And so these quantum fluctuations change this G just a little bit too. They can either pull or push on a muon, changing the way it wobbles once in a while. And so most of these interactions are referred to as the standard model interactions. Here this can be electrons, photons, the four fundamental forces, and various quantum effects. But the main point of the experiment was to discover what's known as the BSM, beyond standard model physics, or potentially new particles and new forces that could be detected if the muon observations were accurate enough. And so if the theory does not match the observations, here we have this BSM. Something is beyond the standard model and something seems to be an anomaly. But trying to theoretically predict all of this is something scientists have been trying to do for the past few decades with some of the most difficult challenges being in regards to the strong force and something referred to as the hydronic vacuum polarization. Here this essentially produced the highest uncertainty in terms of what we should be discovering. Or I guess just to rephrase this, the math was just a little bit too challenging even for some of the best mathematicians on the planet. And so this uncertainty resulted in a lot of different results as you can see right here. But then we had the actual experiments. The experiments that technically began at CERN back in 1959 and continued ever since by using a much more advanced magnet resulting in much more accurate observations. And it was these experiments approximately five years ago that basically produced these somewhat anomalous results. Here the theory and the physical observations were not matching at all. And to the physicists back then this implied, okay, looks like we might have some kind of a maybe fifth force, unknown particles, or something else entirely, causing muons to behave just a little bit differently, with the deviation being significant enough to turn this into a viral story. But as both experiments and the theoretical calculations continued, in the last few years, especially since 2023, 
things started to look very differently. And it all culminated with a study right here. This was just released in May of 2025, and it was in essence a major update on the theory behind all of this, recalculating absolutely everything, and identifying that the predictions before might have been just a little bit incorrect. But at the same time, just a week later, in June of 2025, researchers also released this, the final measurement of the positive muon anomalous magnetic moment, providing one of the most accurate results, with the final conclusion being that everything seems to actually match almost perfectly. The much more accurate recalculation and theoretical prediction is completely in line with physical observations. There was no deviation, no anomaly, and so after these six years, the Muon G-2 saga was finally over. All of this after billions and billions of individual muons moved around this massive 15 meter diameter ring at nearly the speed of light. And for each individual muon, they would actually move around this at least 1000 times. And after years and years of observations and research, we essentially get this. The most precise measurements of the muon's magnetic moment. No anomaly, the standard model of physics seems to be pretty much correct, with the final uncertainty being extremely low, 127 parts per billion. That's actually what this part right here means. And though finding nothing might be not as exciting as discovering a new force, for physicists this is a super important confirmation that everything we know so far, at least when it comes to certain things, seems to be almost certainly super accurate. But because there's still just a little bit of uncertainty, there might be some additional discoveries in the years to come. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find a lot of unreleased footage, videos you've never seen before and videos without any ads. Or consider supporting this channel by joining the channel membership to get early access and to watch some additional videos only available to members. Maybe support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.